Hey there guys, it's Connor here with Chrome Designs and thank you for watching this video. Today I'm going to be showing you how you can import shapes or text or anything in the Cinema 4D realm and just import it to a real life image. Like as we see here, I've just got some text. Connor, uh, if you just go ahead and render it out, it may take a while because of the um, settings that I used. But it looks as if it's actually there, maybe the colours are not the same. And it doesn't maybe fit in, but you can always colour correct that later in Photoshop. Now, let's get started. Oh, and I also made it back round there. But you can all... Ah, let's get rid of that. So go to File New, and you want to start off. Now you want to have your image that you're going to work on. So once you've found an image, I recommend if it's your first time, maybe go for an easy image like, like this. It's, it's, it's quite lateral, it's quite straight, and it's fairly easy to be quite fair as opposed to one that's that's not easy it's like not on the actual one it's bendy and whatnot and the more objects like the more things as in the way the harder it will be as well but now you go to file new you want to make a new background so just go to the light and go to background nothing will happen you need to add a material so just double click in this space down here now go to the color tab texture load image and just find your image that you're going to be using just download one uh, this is just some motorway go off Google images and search it if you want you probably find one or oh, there's probably loads of other ones but now that's done that's it drag that onto the background and it won't fill up all of it you need to go to render and render settings and take it out from 320 by 240 change it to 1280 by 720 that way, so when you go and render out later, you don't forget, and it's bad quality, and just because if you do it at a later stage when you've done it, you need to rearrange like all the objects, and you do just wasted about five minutes of your life. Yeah, and that is never good. So now we've got the background scene set up. You just want to go ahead and import some text. Go to MoGraph Text Object um, J Object. I'm going to type in Connor uh, font. I'm going to use Neo Sans. Neo Sans, it will most likely be in description. Please don't ask what font it is. It's, it's tedious. And just, you just now you just want to line it up. So you go to the rotate tool and where it would actually be. And rotate it back just a bit. And obviously it's high up, so now just drag it down. So you just want to make it look like it's actually there. I mean, there's, it won't actually look realistic because there's no shadows or anything. It looks like it's plonked on, but still tilt it back a bit there we go I'm going to add a bit of depth to it so under the depth I'm going to add a hundred that way it's just a bit bulkier I'm just going to zoom out a bit so it's further away and under the size or the height rather I'm going to change to a hundred so it's half the height and I'm going to zoom in again so it's all a matter of just lining it up to where your image is uh, it doesn't have to be perfect but that is Roughly where I want it. In fact, I think it needs to in this way a bit. There we go. Now you'll see later. Obviously, it won't be perfect unless you're, unless you're just lucky, or you're just amazing. Either way, you want to. If you, well, if you just go ahead and render it out. There we go. That's looking quite nice. But you know, it just still looks like it's just been added there. You want to add some shadows and other things. So what we're going to do is we need to add a plane. So under the click and hold on the cube, go to plane. Now you just want to go to the rotate tool and you just want to locate it on the floor that the text is going to be sitting on. Now this is where the light is going to like, this is where the shadows are going to be placed. So this is going to, it's going to be transparent, like but I po um, getting all muddled up here. It only recognizes the shadow so it doesn't pick up you don't know, it's not like a big black square. But no, you just want to try and get it even so it's actually sitting on the floor. Do it the best you can. There we go, that's coming along. And then you can make it bigger by just clicking the little squares at the ends. Now you want to make it quite big so it's not a hard cut on the, on the lights. Maybe take it back just a little bit. I don't know. 
It's really hard from this angle. Nah, in fact, I'll leave it. It doesn't matter. But I'm just going to lower it down a little bit more. Like so. Now, under the plane, while well, the background material, click control and just drag it up to the plane. Now, this copies it, so if you render it out, it will be on the background. But you notice it's still a big black, so under the plane, you want to add a compositing tag. So, right click on the plane, go to Cinema 4D Tags and Compositing. Now, compositing background, make sure you tick that. So, now if you render it out, you'll see that it's transparent. But there is no light because you haven't added any type of light. Now, you could add a basic light here and drag it up and add shadow map soft just for light. But for this scene, it's not good because it's not a sunny day. As you can see, well, at least I don't think it is. It doesn't work entirely that good day, so the shadows wouldn't be that intense. So I prefer to steer away from just the lights, and I just prefer to go into render settings, effect, and ambient occlusion. Now, maximum ray length, I think we should change up to 140, and just add a bit of contrast, maybe 35. Not 365, 35. There we go. So now if we render it out, Mate, it will, it will take a little bit longer to render, by the way. The shadows just look more realistic and it's more softer. And it just entirely looks a lot better. Now, it's coming along, but we haven't added the material, so the texture is rather bland. So the first material I'm going to make is I'm going to make a dark grey, really edging towards the black. I prefer not to go into the black. I prefer just to stick with the dark grey. I feel it gives a better effect. Now create a new material, and under the colour you want to go to texture, you want to add a gradient. So, click on that, and you 2, 2D use fine, and I'm just going to add some blues, uh, slightly different, just to give it a bit of depth, just to emboss some reflections just a bit. And go back to the colour panel, and under the texture, copy the channel. Then go to luminance, and paste the channel. So you just copy in the exact colours from colour to luminance. Now you could add, go ahead and add a reflection, but the reflection that Max on Cinema 4D gives you do like by default is not very good. So I prefer to crank that all the way down to zero. Go under texture and add a Fresnel. Now this is a more realistic shadow, as you see there. It looks a lot better as opposed to what it did. And just crank it down to in between 30 and 40, I recommend. But you can have a play about with it depending on your scene. Now I'll drag that on the text. And then also the black. But now, because the, the black is on top, that will overlay on the blue. But I'm going to have the black just on the front, on the front panels of the text, like we have there. So to do this, you just want to click on the black texture, go to selection, and type C1. Now that just means that it's like that is just the front panel of the text. So if you go ahead and render it out here, now it's looking a lot better now. Uh, it's not perfect on the floor, but we'll adjust that later just by tilting it and lowering it down. But on the text object, I'm just going to add a cap, fill it cap, and radius, I'm going to crank it out to about 3. So now we'll just create a nice cap, basically, so the blue's going around the edges. Just looks a little bit better, in my opinion, that is. But that is coming along rather nicely. I'm now going to Re reorganize the text like the blues a bit uh, the C's a bit low but then the R's a bit high off the floor so we need it rotating towards the R so rotate it down that way just a tad render it out now most likely we'll not get this perfect so I could just be cutting it short but just go ahead and rotate it and move it until it's alright um, but no that's actually looking alright maybe the C's a bit low and the O, but you can always fiddle about with that. And I'm not going to spend ages tilting text because I'm sure you guys are not too interested in that. But no, that's how you can create text in in a Cinema 4D in a real life image. You can also use any type of object. You could use a square, which you could just rotate and do the exact same things that we did with the text. So remember to have your render settings to 12A by 720. Remember to change that at the beginning. 
it doesn't have to be 12 by 720 but I don't recommend 320 by 240 because that is just rubbish settings but no that's about it for me guys thanks for watching this video uh, the, this is also used in um, this school can be used in like uh, montages or whatever so you could just get an image of that and do it for that purpose doesn't have to be real life you know but there we go that's about it thanks for watching this video guys as I just said please remember to like the video and uh, I'll see you guys soon bye